fact that it drove away is a miracle in itself, considering what happened. But the fact that it's not puddling anywhere is a very good thing. Take over I mean, that could mean that there is a thing. how Piper won't really care about me until there's another dog, <laughs> and then she's like, hey, hey, notice me. Yeah, I know. exercise the dog. It's going right down the middle of the dirt road, but I think over time he usually works his way over to the grass. But yeah, after all that driving, he's in, definitely in need of a good run. Power brakes. Two sets of these are ours. Uh, one for Worsley and a set for Bandy. We can't do Vandy obviously now, so we're just gonna put them in the trailer, store them in there for until we can get Vandy out west here, or we take the brakes back east. But as soon as we can, we're gonna get these on Worsley. And with the weight we carry, with the big wheels and everything, power brakes are just give you a much, much better braking system, much safer. That's it. We've got everything out of storage uh, here in Montana. So some stuff's gonna stay in our trailer, the rest is in our vehicles, and we're, we're really cleaning up after many years on the road. We accumulated a lot of stuff, but these last couple of trips, Carol's been sorting through everything, getting rid of what we don't need and uh, carrying what we do. And off we go, we're heading to Colorado today. back to Sheridan, Wyoming. This is where Carol and I stayed when we were getting uh, repairs done on the Jeep this summer on our way to uh, Expo. And so uh, the KOA where we stayed, they're mostly closed, but they have some sites open, none of the facilities, but uh, we don't need that. We're just looking for a place to park for the night and uh, carry on in the morning. sleep in Sheridan there last night. Uh, we're now on our way south, heading towards Colorado. We're about halfway down Wyoming, and we're seeing on the signs uh, wind warnings with 55 mile an hour crosswinds. So they've been pretty tough. We had a section where the wind was at our back, and that was nice. Had a good tailwind, but right now uh, we're in the crosswind section. So we've pulled over, because I looked online, and it's at the peak, at the worst possible winds right now, and they're gonna start dying down in the next little while, hopefully. So we pulled over to, to make some lunch here, just off the uh, off the freeway, and uh, we're gonna throw the ball for Lando, and then we'll get back into the wind and on the road. Sleep. We got a hotel here in Colorado um, just so we could charge our batteries and after that long windy drive we could uh, take a hot shower, sit in the hot tub a bit and uh, we've got a big surprise for you today. Stay tuned. Hey guys, we made it to one of our favorite spots, the Valley of the Gods in southern Utah and we thought we'd take a minute to just bring everyone up to speed. Now if you've been following along oh, for many years, um, 
you know that we've been in the search uh, for a new vehicle for quite some time. And, uh, but we took our time and we've looked at so many options, or at least over, especially over the past two years. Um, we visited manufacturing facilities, seeing how different trucks and vehicles are being put into production and built. And we've looked at vans at one point. And uh, we've looked at basically from trailers to vans to big trucks, man trucks, trucks <laughs> to like uh, maybe a Toyota, um, all sorts of things. It, but most of all, we've talked to a lot of our friends that live full time on the road yeah. or, and, and our overlanders as well. And yeah. they gave us a huge insight to what we wanted next. And, and good advice, you know, when we always say the difference between opinion, someone's opinion and good advice is uh, you get good advice from someone who's done it or been there. So, um, but we've also got a lot of good advice from you, our followers over the years, and so many suggestions. And as you know, if you start looking for a vehicle, <laughs> it's endless. But what you really need to do, and what we've been working on doing, is understanding what kind of travel we want to do, uh, how many people, what size of vehicle, um, are we just going out on the weekends to go camping, or are we going to be in there for long periods of time so for us it's uh, a unique situation in that we have been on the road a combination of uh, living on the road and living off grid at our cabin for almost eight years now That's coming crazy. up on eight years <laughs> in, in the end of November really wow. uh, yeah so it's been an incredible journey um, but at this point we know how we like to travel but we've come through all kinds of different configurations over the years. So, I mean, if we go back to the beginning, let's do that. It's kind of <laughs> fun to go back to 2016. When we started out, Daniel was what, 14 or? No, younger than younger, that. 12, I guess. Yeah. Um, 12 or 13. And, uh, and then Pete would be 15 and Caroline 16, going on 17, something like that. And uh, we are living in a, in a house you know, like everyone else with a car in the driveway. Carol had a Jeep because she always had this <laughs> adventurous spirit. And uh, our first Jeep was Vandy or I guess it was no, second. the second one. Well, third one, yes. But we, Carol was at that point where you, we have three young kids and she's like, man, that's soccer mom vehicle time or van, minivan time like everyone else. But she's like so determined. <laughs> I'm going to be able to get three kids comfortably and safely with their their chairs in the back of a four-door jeep and uh, she made it work yeah that, yeah it was <laughs> <laughs> it was interesting but i i don't know we've just always loved exploring as a family like many of you of you do and uh, we just wanted to get outside more and the jeep was the perfect vehicle for that and same with the rv when we were starting out like yeah. if we're going all the way back to the very beginning the rv was the perfect tool to get us out there especially because i know i didn't grow up camping you did but i didn't know anything about camping when we first started so i think that was a real um help of security the full the four walls oh, the and kitchen. i was also like uh, we were road schooling the kids yep. at that time. So it was perfect, perfect for that chapter of our lives. And also there weren't as many options. The word overlanding wasn't really no. in our vocabulary. We found that out uh, a year or so on the road. We started meeting folks who had imported vehicles from overseas and there were these big overland vehicles. And, and then the, I, I won't ever forget the time that a Jeep drove past us with this thing on top of it. Yeah. And we found out later that was a tent and then that just blew our minds. It because opened up a whole new world. Yeah, and we would be driving along in, in our RV towing my everyday driver Jeep behind us with all of our bikes and all of our things on it. And then all of a sudden we see this Jeep or Toyota drive down this dirt road and we're like, we want to go that way, you know, and we're going to 
you know, RV parks and stuff. But we were soon, restricted <laughs> by the two-wheel drive. Yeah, soon we wanted to just get out there and explore more, and that's exactly it. Yeah, and and so, like Carol said, the motorhome was the perfect vehicle to get us started, to get us, you know, leaving the comforts uh, and security of a home and and in a neighborhood, and then all of a sudden you're on the road and you're in places you've never been. You don't know where you're going to camp that night. So it was good for phase one, um, but, but like Carol said, very quickly, the kids especially wanted to be more adventurous. And I remember in Denali area in Alaska, we're driving up the paved road, and then it said the old Denali Highway was that way, and it was a gravel road, and one of these overland vehicles just took off up into the mountains. And the kids were like, that's what we want to do. And so we began to explore, and, uh, and with uh, Exploration Outfitters, Matt and his team, they they took Carol's stock Jeep and turned it into um, a vehicle that you could live in. So, uh, kitchen in the back, you know, uh, fridge, stove, um, room for all the gear, a tent on top. And back then, we could fit all three kids into the back seat and me and Carol in the front. kids were growing rapidly and very soon we outgrew the Jeep situation, the one Jeep situation. Um, before going to two Jeeps though, we got a CVT trailer with another rooftop tent and that didn't help us in terms of comfort of driving, but it did give us a lot more sleeping area. So we began cruising around in that situation, which was wonderful. And then eventually we outgrew that as, again and went to a second Jeep. And uh, you've watched some of our, in the last couple of years, you know, we are having so much fun going into some really remote areas, getting into a little bit of trouble whenever we listen to the, uh, the boys about crossing avalanches or, hey, we could do a couple of passes, you know, mountain passes before the sun goes down and we get caught in the mountains. But those are all memories that we'll just never forget. And we have so much fun remembering them together as a family.
But then life goes on and a lot of you, you know, have young families and you're thinking of, uh, get, you know, living a more adventurous lifestyle rather than what you might call um, a societal normal lifestyle. And you wonder what's the next step? And we wondered that too. We had no idea. So we really wanted our kids to get the best education possible. And we found that through what we call road school, just getting out there. Yes, following a curriculum to a certain extent and learning as much as you can in the books, but even more so getting out into the world and meeting people from different cultures and religions and lifestyles and ways of doing things and talking to them and learning from them learning from the areas you're in, learning history by touching and feeling the artifacts and being in the place where it all happened. So that was an amazing part of our journey. But then as kids do, they grew, grew into young adults and um, started to have their own interests. And, and really over a couple of years, it was a time where they were just trying to figure all that out. And we think the ability to sit around a campfire at night, a lot more than when we had a home. Back in the house days, we were so busy. I was, you know, I'd say, well, I got to get up early and go to work tomorrow. Uh, Carol would say, I got to run to the gym. The kids are off with their friends or I got to go to this event or that thing. And, and we never really found the time to, to have that really important family time together. But when we were in this lifestyle, we did. And so we could talk and, and counsel and, and just hash out all these things together as a family which was a gift i think one of the greatest gifts of of overlanding and so through it all the kids have been finding their own way um, pete is just deep dove into this whole thing about being a cinematographer and it's so fun to watch him learn more and more and he's he's now in high demand and gets invited to do epic trips and film amazing things and when he's not doing that he's with us which we really appreciate. Um, and he's making money and, and building a career. Dan, uh, as you know, and if you don't know, Dan started his own YouTube channel. He's just uh, got his own personality, his own way of uh, expressing things and showing his own creativity. And he's building that up. It's a lot of work to build a YouTube channel as we've found out over the years. It's not something that happens overnight. Um, you grind it out bit by bit and uh, that's what Dan's doing. Caroline's on her year of service and she's working really hard and doing all kinds of amazing things and having a lot of fun and every once in a while we get to have her back. And in fact, we're hoping to be able to bring her into wherever we end up at Christmas, which is going to be awesome to have the whole team together. Carol and I want to continue this lifestyle. We love living up at the cabin and that whole adventure, but we also have dreams to drive around the world. So we need a vehicle that can accommodate that. So we had this dream, what well, was a couple years ago, I think Carol came up with the idea. She's like, we need to take the Jeep and the motorhome and squish them together and that would be the perfect vehicle. The motorhome is super luxurious and comfortable and you have lots of space. 
but you can't really go anywhere that we want to go. The Jeep can go anywhere, but it doesn't have any, a lot of space. Now, we just got back from a, a long journey together over, what was 6,000 miles or so, into a lot of backcountry wilderness areas. We slept super comfortably. It's an awesome vehicle. We have a heater in there. We got battery power, all kinds of stuff. But what we we're missing were a few important things, right? So what are some of those things that you miss in the Jeep? Well, the Jeep is, you know, it's an amazing vehicle and I am super happy with the build. I don't think I have one bad thing to say about it actually. And it has done us good for so many years, but I mean, if we're thinking about going like world traveling and going full time, like months at a time, six months at a time, maybe eight months at a time, the Jeep does get um, constricted. Like, um, and sometimes uh, I just like to use the bathroom, uh, not have to go outside or maybe not have to cook in the elements as much. But you like, really notice it on cold, cold mornings. <laughs> yeah, especially in the cold weather, like because we are from cold weather and it's not like we're always in just like that perfect 72 degrees sunny um, weather. Like we're not scheduling, you know, every day around the perfect weekend. This is full timing. So right. you hit all sorts of conditions. Sometimes you might have a breakdown. So you get stuck in a place and that's your house. So, you know, that's something you have to really think about. Like everything that you own is in that vehicle. It is an amazing vehicle for maybe a few months to you know weekends and weeks on the road but full timing or you know just living your whole life off grid um had its some, limitations some, some yeah limitations you can't stand up and walk around <laughs> i mean you can stand up now in the in the jeep with yeah, the jxl yeah. but anyway it's tight so <laughs> we especially if you want to bring along like if you want to have people over and stuff like that yeah. it's just a little tight well just this morning it was minus five celsius so that's like 27 or 28 degrees fahrenheit it's not not freezing no. but man to get outside and make coffee <clears throat> and we've done it for years so we know yeah. what we're talking about but it's cold and uncomfortable and then you race back in turn on the heater and warm up that's cool if you're going out for a weekend or a week or even like carol said a couple of months but we're now talking about full time. This is our home. We don't have a home. We have a cabin, off grid cabin, but we don't have a, f a house, right? A full fledged house to go back to. And a lot of our friends, they go out with a little rooftop tent and they're fine. They go for a couple of days, maybe a week, and then they go home and warm up, take a hot shower. And that's awesome. There's nothing wrong with that, but that's not our life. We're full timers. So um, we had to look for a vehicle that would accommodate that full time lifestyle. <laughs> A vehicle that we could travel, because we do travel fast sometimes, um, that we could go from hot, like 90 degrees, all the way to below freezing temperatures. And we wouldn't have to worry about the plumbing situation, right. like none of that. So everything, so basically we're taking our cabin and putting it on oh, four yes. wheel, <laughs> uh, four wheel. So yeah, the, the vehicle that we ended up choosing, because uh, I guess we're letting something out of the bag here, we have chosen our vehicle. So stay tuned, we can't wait to show it to you, but it, we have a few things to go through before we get to that point. Um, it had to be like our cabin on wheels. With the motorhome, one limitation, all the plumbing's on the outside, so we've even driven from hot weather to cold and had everything freeze up and ended up with hundreds of dollars of damage. Uh, so we needed a vehicle with internal plumbing so we could go through those temperature zones without worrying about it. We wanted a vehicle that had a pass through to the front. We wanted to be able to go from our bed to the driver's seat without having to go outside. Um, we, we also, but we didn't want something that is massive. So there's some of these huge vehicles you see out there and man, they're like a, a full-fledged RV on a four by four chassis, which is cool, but that also would be a limitation to us because we like going to pretty remote places and tight places and so on. So we needed something that would be kind of low pro. Uh, what else was important to us? A bathroom inside, doesn't have to be a full-fledged bathroom, but the ability to have hot water shower and and not have to go outside to, to pee at three in the morning if, you, if you're so inclined in a snowstorm. Um, <laughs> so yeah. what else? Uh, to be able to cook inside from time to time, as you know, we do 90% of our cooking yeah, outside. I, I'll still cook. Uh, yeah 90% of our meals outside there's just something about it and there's something about you know campfire and all that 
But there's one thing that I don't really miss because I think we've, you know, we've done close to eight years of tent, rooftop tents, and I have nothing bad to say about them. They're fantastic. I love them. But I did know that when we built this new vehicle, I wanted four walls, like hard sides. Hard sides. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we'll, Oof. you know, do backpack tenting and stuff like that. That's, that's fine. And I'm excited about that. But for our home on wheels, we definitely wanted hard side walls. Yeah. And there's some options where there's uh, articulating or pop-up roofs. Um, a lot of them have soft tent sides. So that was something we wanted to stay away from. So the perfect build for us had a pass through. It was small enough that um, it would fit our needs, big enough that it would give us the comfort, a very robust four wheel drive so that we could get up into the places we like to get, um, had a, a, a roof that would come down so that we're not so high, such a high profile, we could sneak under trees from time to time. And then like Carol said, had hard walls. So uh, it took us a couple years, but we found that vehicle and we're super happy. And we're gonna reveal this to you, this vehicle in next week's video. So stay tuned. Um, if you wanna see it early though, we're giving a sneak preview to our, all our, our Patreon family. And, for, and if you don't know what Patreon is, um, some of our viewers have said, hey, we love the content. We wanna make sure it keeps going. So we're willing to contribute a few dollars. You can go from three, three bucks a month to all the way up to 20 or 25, I think it is. And to our Patreon family, thank you so much. You do really help keep the channel going. There's a lot of behind the scenes expenses. Um, if you blow an engine like we did this summer or cameras and uh, audio equipment and all the stuff to keep a channel going. Um, but we really enjoy doing it and we re really enjoy having you on board. But if you ever thought about joining our Patreon uh, channel, go to patreon.com slash Epic Family Road Trip. I'll put a link below and uh, you can get a sneak preview of the truck. We, we're gonna try to do a lot more on our, channel, our Patreon channel going forward, exclusive content, um, behind the scenes stuff, whatever we can come up with, so uh, check that out. So this really feels like a new era for Epic Family Road Trip. Carol and I will be traveling in our new vehicle and doing some, uh, as we've done in the past, empty nest uh, edition stuff. We're gonna be with the boys as much as possible, and Caroline when she gets back. But it's different than back when they were just kids riding along with mom and dad. We're envisioning a new era where Carol and I will go exploring somewhere. Pete might take off on his bike and go down Baja, or you know, or Dan loves to explore historic places, and he might go film an episode completely separate over there. But at the end of the week or every other week or something, we all get back together and do a trail and make a meal. So uh, that's kind of the, the vision we have for things going forward. That allows the, the young people to develop their own careers, their own styles, their own ambitions and, and things that they're very excited about. And it, and it uh, allows us to keep the Epic Family Road Trip rolling down the road. So, and Lando, Lando, what are we gonna do with Lando? Come here, come to mom. He'll have a lot Here's, of choices to run trails with whomever yeah, he wants. <laughs> yeah, so much. Lando can go between um, the vehicles. Sometimes he'll be hanging out with Carol and I. He just loves the variety, don't you, buddy? Um, he spent a couple months with Dan at the uh, at the cabin, and he just loved that time. And almost didn't miss us at all. But then we came home. He was so excited to see us. And, so I think uh, Lando's not going to be restricted to one thing. He's going to be uh, able to go you know, between the different adventures. We can't wait to take you guys along with us. And super excited for this new chapter. And in the meantime, we'll, we'll see, see you down, down the road. road.